every time a person asked the question, and I'm sure all of us know what's the question is, I'm sure that must have been good enough to fund the second part of Bahubali. <laughs> How many times have you been asked? Uh, your estimation is uh, more or less correct. <laughs> okay. I was watching Ega the other day. That's the one of the other big, very interesting movies of a housefly taking revenge, which you, which you must have seen. It was called Makin in, uh, in Hindi. That's right. And the journey you made from a tiny housefly to a larger than life Bahubali. What has it been? You have been working on this movie for the last five years, from the time you actually conceived it and shooting it. What has been the journey like for you, personally? Eat, drink, dream, Bahubali? Yeah, uh, more, or, uh, more or less. Uh, for me, I always wanted to make this uh, larger than life film, with larger than life characters, larger than life uh, uh, film settings or whatever you call it. Uh, all my films, starting from student number one, and uh, all the films are like uh, learning experiences for me to do this, uh, to do this big film. So each and every film, I was learning something, something more uh, uh, that could help me uh, make Bahubali. Uh, Ega was a, a very good experience in in getting the scales right because we are. We are talking about a small, tiny housefly. The technology. Uh, yeah, uh, the technology and uh, where everything looks uh, larger. Mm. So when it came to Bahubali, the humans are like uh, fly size. And all the waterfalls and uh, uh, um, uh, waterfalls or the palaces or everything was so large. So technically, Ega was a, a lot, lot of help for us, for me and uh, Sindhil to get the scaling uh, properly right. Since we have Team Bahubali here, and here is the dreamer, but how much of grief does he give to each one of you when he wants you to transform his dreams into reality? I'll start with you, Sabu, because you are the ones who have to create all those big palaces. Is he a tough taskmaster? He's really a tough uh, taskmaster. But when you see him working, I think we are not, uh, not doing enough. So we had to work and push our level to the next level. And I think the dream, it was our, his vision and we had to make it happen for him. So I took it as a challenge and first time when he met me, he showed me a visual which he wants to bring it into the film, that was the waterfall, which was about 2,000 feet waterfall or something like that. So I knew what, what scale he was looking at. So initially I was thinking, why is he calling me for a Telugu film, should I be a part of it? Then I heard the subject, but the same subject can be done in different levels, scales. When I saw this picture, I knew what was his dream. Then I knew it was not an easy so film. what was your first impression about Raja Mauli? See, actually, he comes as a very uh, soft-spoken, humble... So Appearances I, are deceptive. Yeah, because I actually never knew about... Uh, I know about the film called Makki, which came in... Yes. Some I had... had a, some I thought he uh, conceived it quite well and made it happen. It was a very... So I knew intelligence... Like, he's an intelligent director, and I would like to work with people who challenges me to do something which is beyond... Uh, which others have done. And I wanted to show them it can be done. Okay. So, I think it was a good challenge. Senthil, this is the eighth movie you have worked with Raja Mauli. Yeah. <laughs> good habit, bad habit? Uh, a very difficult habit. He is <laughs> 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 uh, uh, someone, uh, see, I've been working with him since probably 2003 or something. Mm. With every film, what I have seen is he's uh, thirsty for uh, doing something more. His thirst for uh, doing something which people have not done or like something, getting into new zones where people have not, uh, it's like going, getting into unventured territories is his, uh, what I can say, his passion. So he's not, I, d I did one thing, now this is my comfortable zone, no, I don't want to stay there. So in the same way, so he pushes you out of the comfort zone. I, so it's like, uh, for example, in Maki, I unlearned whatever I did t t till Maki. And we, okay, this is how we do it. Since with Bahubali, you have to unlearn Maki also. So it is like with every film, it's a living up to his expectation itself is a big challenge. So how difficult will it be if you, if another producer director calls you to shoot their movie? Uh, now I don't know what to do after Bahubali actually. <laughs> As I said, the most important person because you are putting the money on Raja Mauli's dream. Uh, give us a sense of how much it cost in the first place. <laughs> It's, uh, I think both projects put together is around uh, 400 and under 450 crores. For 450 crores and that makes it the most expensive movie. Yeah, as, a, as a project, yeah. As, as a, project, a project. It's definitely as a project, yeah. 
Shobhu, were there moments at any time when you thought, am I doing the right thing? Definitely, I would be lying if I, <laughs> Definitely, I would be lying if I wasn't going to. Anybody would go through that, especially in the first part when we were, uh, you know, uh, towards… Uh, Tell us what was going on in your mind. No, uh, see, the, uh, the, it's a very con conflicting emotion. So, like, when you, you, when you… I truly believed and I believe in the vision that Rajmali had and his passion and uh, what we are, we are all together working for. And I knew that every rupee was going towards the film. It's not going to someone's fancies or someone's… Uh, and uh, like I said, it, the remuneration component is very, very small in this whole project. Uh, the total amount, very marginal, very small amount went to the remuneration. So. Uh, predominantly, most of it went into the project. So the money was being spent well, and I, I knew that. And it's going to show on the screen. And it's going to sh reflect in the pro reflect uh, in the uh, when people see the movie. Uh, but at the same time, it's something that uh, no one has done before. Uh, so it's it's kind of uncharted territory, and there's always a lot of doubt whether th these kind of monies can be recuperated, and how do you generate that kind of uh, as the budgets are going? How do you generate that kind of cash flows to pump in? and keep it uh, alive, the project, without stalling at certain points. So these are all uh, the e emotions that go through you, the doubts that creep in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, the did doubts he give you, were... Did he give you grief? Uh, no, actually, I, it was, uh, again, like I said, it's conflicting. There's uh, <laughs> not really a, a grief. Tell but me, were there people who dissuaded you against putting in so much of money into a project? Yes, of Telugu movies aren't of this kind of scale. Uh, no, so. not even Hindi movies. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, no, I mean, there was definitely, within my immediate circle, there was no dissuasion. Uh, me, my partner, uh, we were all in it. And we, we, we decided to go it all the, all the way. Mm. But uh, there is, uh, definitely if we had listened to the industry people or uh, other people, there would definitely have been multiple uh, uh, people, many people who thought we were fools, we were crazy, we were stupid, and there was all sorts of things. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, we survived. So how does it uh, feel now to look smarter? <laughs> like, uh, like someone said, uh, the day before the release, people thought we were stupid and idiots, and then the day after, they thought we were genius. So. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're running the last leg of the marathon, another 79 days to go. You're telling me backstage about how the sleeping hours are now going to get reduced almost by the day. What is going on in your head right now? Uh, is it like, I'll just get finished with this project and take a long break? What is it? What is going on in your mind? No. Uh, uh, the shooting part is over, the post-production remains? Yes, the, the, uh, the shooting part is over. It was uh, quite hectic by the time we came to the end of the shooting. Uh, I'm actually eagerly looking forward to uh, sit in the post-production to see, to give the final touches ba uh, because uh, during shooting no one understands uh, how it is actually taking shape. Is it, it is on the editing table, it is on the, uh, during the post-production that it actually comes, the vision, all the dreams that you had comes into actual form. So I'm very eagerly looking forward to do the, uh, do the final editings, to, do, to see the VFX shots come in, to do the uh, background score and all that. I'm very eagerly looking forward to my whole post-production. I was speaking to Suresh Babu, eminent producer and also the father of Rana Dagupati who plays uh, Balala Deva in your movie. And he was saying that the conclusion part two has shaped up far better than the first part. When you go back five years and think of how you conceived it in the first place, has it kind of all fallen in place? Is that the way you would see it or probably even better? Uh, it would never happen. Uh, uh, the actual product, uh, uh, for, uh, I think for any filmmaker, it would never come into the actual, uh, to the level that we have dreamed because mind has no limitations. So uh, the conceiving would be uh, uh, sky high. And when we actually uh, uh, get to shoot it, to, to produce it, mm. to make it into reality, it always uh, keeps a, a, a bit short of what we have dreamed. Mm. Uh, but uh, the whole journey is to get it there, to push it to that point, to how much, to the maximum level uh, that you can. Mm. So you speak about pushing. Senthil, what are the nature of discussions that he would have with you before actually planning a particular sequence or planning a particular shot because you are the one who's actually putting it on screen. Uh, see, uh, with Rajamali's uh, vision is very clear. So there are so many aspects, as he told. Like, uh, like suppose we uh, once I set up my camera, there are so many aspects which has to be taken care of. Like whether first of all, the uh, is the emotion coming out right? That is the first and foremost point. Then the kind of sets which uh, Sa Sabu sir has put up, whether they have been. Uh, exploited to the great extent. At the same time, the artists are looking good. 
at the same time the costumes which uh, we have done so much of homework and it, it's coming out right so there are like uh, so many things like okay like where to put the camera how to do it and also the whole uh, discussion is about getting the right possible uh, frame to uh, to uh, so that everything is uh, as he told the money spent should be seen in it so <coughs> The first thing is like uh, getting the emotion right is the m major aspect of it. Then like it's all about like the discussion is uh, always about uh, how to get uh, one step better than what we have done. So Bahubali part one we have achieved something. So second part has to be definitely better than that. So uh, it's not only every shot, it is every frame that we have been working tirelessly to get. So in a sense you are competing with yourself, you, with yeah, your own yeah, creation yeah, yeah, in yeah, part one. Yeah. Uh, Sabu, uh, is, would you count Bahubali? part one and part two as your biggest and best projects ever? Actually, um, I've done 115 films. Yes. And this is my 115 film, which mm. uh, probably two. And I think it is like uh, two films, it was an experience of 10 films experience, mm -hmm. as if I was doing 10 films. Because I, even I learned a lot. Why I also ask is that because art directors don't really get the pride of place, of course. Legends like you and um, Tota Tarni sir are legends in Indian cinema, but in that sense that their work doesn't get noticed. As Senthil was just mentioning, it was very important to show the scale of your creation. See, our job is such is an irony in our profession where see, the, the more better you do and realistic, you go unnoticed. Yes. And that is what we need to, because finally the subject should work and his vision should come through. Yes. So we are put, we are the back, uh, mm. behind the camera. Mm. And how, my challenge for that film was to do everything, get, get everything done in a, in a time frame. Mm. And everything was huge. We had used so many cranes, industrial cranes. Just give a sense of how many carpenters, how many people you actually used? See, every day, minimum of 500 and up to 2,000 people used to work for me for five years. And, My God. And to shift the things, whatever we had done, we were using at least two to three cranes minimum every day to shift things from one place to another, put it in its place. So it would like be a logistical nightmare in, uh, yeah, more than anything else. it was not else. easy. It was more like a, I was like an engineer, architect, <laughs> put everything together actually. We had laid roads to put set actually. Almost 100 trucks of uh, mud was put to create road into a quarry and things like off late. <laughs> no, okay. Recently. Backstage when I was discussing with Team Bahubali, Shobhu, the producer said that we are still counting how much we have spent. <laughs> right? So, you know, if you have to count for every truck and every crane, <laughs> I guess it's a difficult job. Right? Um, now, uh, when you look at Bahubali now, you know, as you said, another three months a movie will be released. What do you think it has done to Indian cinema in general? Because it's no longer seen as just a Telugu cinema product. It's just crossed you know, all kinds of boundaries. What do you think Bahubali has done which no movie before could do? Uh, I'm a very wrong person to ask the question. You, you should be uh, telling the, uh, uh, that answer. I should be asking and no, you should be the answering sense that. that obviously, as I said, it uh, has crossed boundaries. Uh, Is yeah. it, was it because of the scale of the movie, which no Indian audience at least had seen in an Indian movie? Uh, or was the subject universal? What, what really? It, it, all those things uh, put together. Uh, when, a, when a film is uh, hugely is successful and, in, in, and brings in money, whatever the film might be, it can be a historical film, it, it can be just a love story. When it uh, uh, crosses the, uh, the generally imagined barriers, mm. you know, it opens up corridors for all the filmmakers to uh, 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 for the producers to pump in more money or for the creators to think in different ways. Why uh, I also ask this Rajamoli is that while Telugu uh, cinema has a history of mythological films, uh, Hindi cinema doesn't really have that kind of a tradition. What do you think made even the Hindi audience actually get attracted to the product that you put uh, out? Uh, Somehow I don't believe that one kind of uh, people from one region or one, uh, one language will watch certain genre of uh, films or listen, listen to only uh, a certain, certain genre of uh, storytelling. I don't believe that. Human is a human whether it's a Hindi speaking or a Tamil speaking or a Telugu speaking. You know, the human emotions between a father and mother or a daughter and a uh, sister or whatever relations, it is the same across the whole world. So when you place your story or base your story on human emotions and when it's told in an effective way, effective way where language is not the barrier, 
your visuals tell the story. F film is a, is a visual medium. When your visuals tell the story, I don't think language, I never believed language is a, is a barrier. Mm. I believed in Maki too. Mm. I believed that in Maki too, but when we released Maki in Hindi, we couldn't get a proper release. Mm. It, it, didn't, it, it didn't fetch the kind of money that I expected mm. it to. But I was not uh, disappointed because on television, Maki was a super, super duper successful. So uh, my, I, I always had uh, belief in that. Mm. You base your uh, story on general human emotions and you tell it in a rich visual medium, it will be accepted. And luckily with Bahubali, we got a proper uh, distributor, uh, yeah. say Karan, uh, Karan Johar or uh, uh, AA Films. Mm. We had a proper thing planned and it, it fetched. Backstage when we were discussing with Tamanna, one of the things that she said in your presence is that Rajamoli does almost everything. Uh, whether it is sword fighting to actually playing out some scenes. So, tell me what is Rajamoli the director like? Uh, no, actually the, uh, the, the secret is that I enjoy doing that. So, okay. on, on, on guise of uh, uh, taking care of the actors, I, I, I try to do all those, all those stunts and enjoy myself. Uh, uh, as a director, uh, I don't like to compromise on, on my visuals and, and uh, sometimes I understand that I am putting my technicians and my uh, actors into difficult positions. I'm, sometimes I know that I am hurting them, um, uh, but still I don't like to compromise on, 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 my, on my visuals. Mm. Uh, and I think even they, mm. when, they are, uh, when they see that I am working only towards the betterment of the product, not because of some ego issues or anything. They give their 100%. Mm. So, uh, so I think it is, uh, uh, as a director, I, I think I am How good are you at sword fighting? I am <laughs> nothing. As I was telling you, I just take it as an excuse to enjoy myself. Okay, before closing, I just want, I'm just curious, I was thinking about it as you were speaking. Did your dad, when he told you the story, tell you the story of the two parts in one go? Or did he also build up the suspense as to why Katapa killed Bhavgali? No, it was one story, one single story. Uh, actually, it's uh, like so many people thinking it's not a sequel. Yeah. It's, it's one story that's been, it's a big story. So we divided it into two films for the, uh, f because we can't release a five-hour film. Uh, so he told me in one go. Okay, so your dad did not keep the suspense, but he keeps the suspense till the 28th of April. Thank you very much, Team Bahubali, and all the best to you for Bahubali part. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Pleasure.